Welcome to Restoration Church, located in Goleta, California. To learn more about us, please visit r-church.org. To watch our service or join us via live stream, check out our YouTube channel by searching Restoration Church Goleta. This morning will be different in that uh, I'm just simply going to read the word over you. I'm not going to expound on the text. Um, I think Jesus' words speak very clearly for themselves. But I'm going to ask that you would pray. So I'm going to read a section of text and then ask you to pray in that text. Now, if you're here and you're not a Christian, and this is weird for Christians, so this must be extremely weird for you, um, I would ask that you would consider praying. Listen to these words and then praying, speaking to God and asking if he's real, if he's true, these types of things. We have been in a series where... We called it, we need to talk, as Jesus is saying it, and then we need to pray. And it's John 14 through 17. And so I'm going to slowly read John 14 through 17. It's stop at certain times. You don't need your Bibles out. I just want you to just listen as, we, as I read this over you. Listen to these truths and then pray through them as we go. Let not your hearts, these are the words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and still you do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these he will do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it.
if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so the world may know that I love the Father, rise, let us go from here. Jesus continues and says, as they're walking, 
I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in, my lo- in, abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things that I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you go and that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another.
If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my, if they kept my word, they will also be, keep yours. But all these things they do to you on account of my name, because they do not know who sent me, him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering a service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. And none of you ask, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the rule of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all, all, all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, and he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you.
a little while and you will see me no longer. And again a little while and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this? <laughs> he says to us, a little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you were asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while you will not see me, and again, a little while you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask in the name of the Father, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I, that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I have come from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered each to his own home and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. 
I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they believe that you sent me. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours, all are mine, all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, that those which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth.
I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are on me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them as even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even the world, even though the world does not know you, I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I have made known to them your name and will continue to make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next chapter that we start next week is the beginning of Jesus' betrayal. In John chapter 18, verse 1, it says that they leave from there and go to the garden. And we know this is the Garden of Gethsemane. The same garden where he prays that God would save him from this death. The same garden which I believe that the wrath of God began to be poured out on him for our sins and the things that we've done against the Father. And then he goes from there to the beatings, to the mockery, to being spit on, to the crown of thorns. He's beat so badly that the God in flesh cannot bear his own cross. And then they crucify him. They put nails in his hands and his feet. And the death comes from asphyxiation to where he couldn't breathe. It's slow, painful death. But isn't God good that the story doesn't end there? For on the third day after he was buried, he rose again. And the things that he just proclaimed to his closest disciples before all this takes place comes true. This is the good news by which we proclaim. And this is as a weekly reminder, we do a thing called communion, where we take bread and we take juice And in those elements, we're reminded of what we're about to walk through in the text in the suffering and death of Jesus. But in those reminders, we're also reminded of the great truths that we just read. You have Jesus's peace. You have Jesus's joy. You have the Holy Spirit. He's looking to answer your prayers And if that's not enough, you are loved by God. You receive that in Jesus' name. If I could have the band come up, the elders be placed. There's communion on either side over these next two songs. Take communion whenever you're ready. If not, just stay in your place and meditate on Scripture. Sing with us. And if you're here and you're not a Christian, I would ask that you wouldn't partake in the bread or the juice, that you wouldn't eat or drink of the juice, because what that is, it's a proclamation of something that we believe. And if you don't believe it, there's no reason for you to proclaim it. But don't see that as an exclusion. See that as an invitation. You are invited to the table.
Why, you may ask? Why would you do such a thing? Because the truths that I just read can be true for you too. But you need to come and to believe in Jesus before any of this can take place. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name and the power of your Holy Spirit, praying, Lord God, that your Spirit would now abide with us, that your Spirit would now help us to respond in joy and peace and the things that you grant us. Lord God, that just the idea that you tell us that we're going to have trouble, but we don't have to let our hearts be troubled. Lord, help us to believe. Help us to believe. We pray these things in the glorious name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, amen. Thanks for listening in. If you have any questions or need prayer, send us an email at info at r-church.org. Grace and peace.